Hey folks, so I'm going to talk you through the basics of getting set up with FMOD, which is our audio middleware. And for the sake of um, using the right terminology, we're actually going to be using the program called FMOD Studio because um, there's different sort of versions that um, we can use, but the software itself is actually called FMOD Studio. So if you go to the website, you get, um, you get this and you can actually do cool things like check it out in Celeste, like the actual FMOD Celeste project is, is here and everything. So um, use this website, there's great resources, but let's just download and we need to sign in to view downloads. And I don't know if you can, no, you can't submit a password. Once we sign in, FMOD Studio is what we want. And we all want to use the same version, um, I believe, which is 2.02. .02. There are newer versions, but if we use the version that we have access to at the university, then we should be okay when it comes to um, hot swapping our project. In, in other words, just saving it um, to our external hard drive and bring that external hard drive in and taking it back home and you shouldn't have compatibility issues. So we want Windows 64 bit. And once you have it downloaded, um, go ahead and start FMOD take a second and we're into the loading screen um, so we can create a new project or we can open a project one of um, one of the projects that you've been working on before or the example project is probably the only one that you're going to see so I'm just going to for now um, use example project as a quick way of demonstrating what's going on in FMOD I just want to make sure I cover the very basic idea that you have a file you want to drag into FMOD. So for now, I'll just delete the example sounds um, just to show you the behavior. Because in Reaper, we could drag an audio file into the main area here, which was like our timeline. But in FMOD, we don't really have a timeline until we have an audio event. So the audio event needs to be generated first and we can do that by right clicking here and saying new event new 3d timeline or new 2d timeline let's just explore the difference between these two for a second here's a 2d timeline and a 3d timeline forget the action thing for now we'll forget that completely we don't action is not quite as um, useful as a timeline so we'll just go with the timeline 2d and 3d and um, just for sake of illustration i can say 2d here and uh, 3D and I might um, make a test folder um, just to hide these later on if they're kind of in the way but they're nothing really um, I want to just show you that the only difference between a 2D sound which is one that you hear in both ears all the time in a game like music or um, narration let's say that's always really in your head between 3d sound which is a sound that is positioned in the game world spatialized if you like which enjoys attenuation which is volume roll off over time according to the distance set here um, the only difference between that is that this spatializer right here makes it 3d and that's it it's as simple as that if the spatializer is on an event it can be heard in, th in its position in 3D space in the game. And if it's deleted, it's actually a 2D event. So the event becomes 2D. And I've already got an event called 2D, so it won't let me have the name the same. So I'll put the spatializer back on there by undoing. And this event, whatever I have in this event here on this track or on another track, if I make a few tracks, will be heard according to the settings of the spatializer in the game in terms of from one meter to 20 meters from the sound, the event will have a audible kind of attenuation, which is quietening over distance according to this graph here. And if we didn't have anything in FMOD, let's say um, we have a sound effect that we want to get into FMOD. If we don't have an event ready to receive a timeline ready to receive the audio what will happen is we can just drag it straight to the event area and it will also populate an event um, as a 3d timeline usually we want 3d timeline not 2d and we press create and it will automatically name 
the event with this silly name of the file, depending on how it was named. Um, so that um, that's kind of why I would always, I usually make an, an event and it's good practice to, by testing, know what the attenuation is that you want in the game. It can be different depending on the game in terms of the units they use and set that here. You can double click it and you can type it in and say 100 meters or whatever down here. It's very small. And then um, you can actually call this, uh, let's say we call it 3D event template um, even better. We can say like template 100 meters just to remind us that it's just a template of a an event that will go quiet after 100 meter or towards 100 meters and this is kind of how i would recommend working just leaving this here and every time you want to make a new event in fmod you can just control d you can duplicate it and then rename the duplicate like uh pistol or whatever and then you can drag in your actual pistol sound or whatever asset that you've got ready into the pistol and it's not going to rename it to something weird and the reason that it's unassigned is because um, we have to assign it to a, um, a master bank we don't need to worry about this right now we'll, we'll look at that later but essentially when it comes to getting sounds into game we need to make sure the sound is assigned to some bank and these are the banks that come with the example project so um, it just gives you a sense for what the normal banks are. You don't need to worry about this really. Just assign it to the master bank, it's fine. And um, you actually guess you file build and it will send the audio um, to wherever the edit preferences build browse button is telling it to go and we'll point this towards the game directory. Um, and that information should be written down in the documentation as to where exactly that should be. Um, but yeah, that's the kind of basics of getting a sound in to FMOD and into your game in a real hurry. It's just understanding this idea of a 3D timeline. So let's go ahead and look at um, more examples of events in FMOD. And these are all the folders and files that come with the example project. So if I click one of them, it will appear. And this is actually quite a nice, simple one to start off with. So. Let's just minimize the others. Good old button press sound. Looks like these files have come from text to MP3 as well. Highlight. 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 Oh yeah, that's because I was changing them. And um, this is a really good thing to do to actually bring in files from the text to MP3 website. And this one says highlight and the event is called button underscore highlight which means in unity i can use this sound button highlight to test whether or not the ui button highlight sound works so the website being able to use this text to mp3 website which i will just um show you now very very quickly if you're not familiar with it it's really useful because you can type in words and then you can put them in FMOD and you can actually test out that specific action in FMOD. So this, this example that I chose is actually one that I already put in that sound for. Um, let me just choose one of, one of the uh, standard FMOD examples. It doesn't matter. They're all, these are all UI sounds. They're all very simple events. So we call a sound effect an event. And it's kind of different to Reaper because in Reaper, all the individual tracks get rendered down to um, our sound effect when we actually export or render the sound out of Reaper. But FMOD is not really for mixing in the same way. It's not really for designing sound at all. It's actually just a trigger system. So we don't have much control over the audio file, although we do actually have the basics, which is quite useful because I can actually do some very basic smoothening if there's any kind of pops or clicks or anything like that and timing issues, I can move it around. But essentially, FMOD just controls the triggering of this sound, the behavior, so that whatever um, event that we have here, when that is played in the game engine, pause, pause. 
it's going to kind of behave exactly as we set it up in FMOD unless we have any complicated instructions coming from the game code. Pause. So here we have a very simple sound. Um, it's pause sound. And um, yeah, it's just pause. playing on spacebar and then it's automatically releasing the sound. Pause. You can see that the actual um, the sound, the blue container, this is called an instrument, by the way, because there's different containers that can trigger audio in different ways. This blue simple container Pause. stops being lit when it releases the sound. So that means that the sound would cease existing in the game, which is good because Pause. if the sound didn't release, let's say, for example, there was a loop set up and the sound wasn't being able to release, that would continue to play in the game. Even if we can't hear it, that would still take up sort of resources, CPU and memory in the game, which could eventually lead to a crash, but I don't think you need to worry too much about that. Um, it's just um, explaining a bit about the basics. So let's remove that loop region. So we do have a router at the top and here's our sound. And we click on the track and we can change the volume. If we want to, we can add um, like a basic EQ effect and we can change the way the pause sounds. Um, but FMOD isn't really for designing sound like this. It's just sometimes it, it's um, saving time if we do these sort of mild tweaks in FMOD versus doing them in Reaper because it means we don't have to jump back to Reaper. So we can remove some of the frequencies. This is a great effect. I mean, if there's just one effect that you should know in FMOD, it's the 3 EQ. It's quite useful because sometimes you might have some noise in the low frequency you want to get rid of. And um, same with the high frequency and whatnot. And you can double click them and they go back to normal. You can right click and bypass if you don't want to have it on right now, but maybe later, or you can just delete it. So that's a very simple um, track in, in FMOD. If we click on the master track, we get some additional stuff going on down here. And um, we don't really need to worry about any of this stuff, except when we are looking at an audio event that is a 3D sound. Let me just pick one of these that's quite simple. Or interactable, no. Mm. Let me just go back to the pistol, even though it's a few different tracks um, stacked on top of each other. And this is quite squeezed, so we can go control um, hard bracket right to expand, hard bracket left to collapse again. So these are green containers instead of blue ones. And all that means is that it's a playlist container. So FMOD is going to kind of randomly, well in this case it's not random, it's shuffle but it will change which sound of the two it's going to play back. So you don't get bored of the same sound if it's the same gunshot going off. And we've got a really nice kind of um, shell eject sound hitting the floor, and there's actually four of those. So it's going to choose one of the first two head sections, one of the first two body sections, and one of the four shell sounds. This is a very common idea in sound design for game that we have variation and um, usually sound designers will sort of design the sound in different sections so that these three different permutations can kind of mean that you never hear the same sound twice. Well, you've got like two, two permutations by two, two permutations and then there's four there. So if you do the maths, it kind of gives you a good variation. But um, for now, we're not really concerned about any of this stuff. I just want to um, talk a bit about the master track and the fact that the sound event called pistol will not exist in 3D space in your game. In other words, it won't be spatialized and it won't receive attenuation, which is becoming quieter over distance, unless it has an FMOD spatializer, which is actually active. I have this in bypass for some reason, but yeah, let's have this active. And this is what allows this event to get quieter with distance. If you click off the master channel, this stuff will disappear. Um, so yeah, just be aware. Oh, it stays there. But if you click back in the track or somewhere else, it might disappear. So this spatializer is going to um, attenuate the sound over distance in this manner. 
And what's quite curious about this is that we should be able to set the max distance of this event. Aha! Sorry, I just took a moment there because um, this is the default, which is you see the, um, the distance down the bottom right of the event on the master track because you can only have these settings really on the master track here. Well, that's potentially not the case, but let's just say the master track is where, for now, you only set the distance of an event, which means from one meter to like 20 meters, it's going to have a volume attenuation fall off of full volume down to no volume. So 21 meters means you're not gonna hear this in the game if you're 21 meters away from your enemy shooting you you're not going to hear it. And it's going to fall off in this way. This is a nice default attenuation curve. You could put it to something different, but um, you don't want it to fall off too sharply. It'll be unnatural because it's a gunshot. So I usually go for this slightly nonlinear attenuation, which is the default. You can actually override that and you can do some kind of weird stuff here, but you don't need to do that. And um, you don't need to worry about anything really that isn't here. Spatializer being active and set here and the volume of your event maybe. If it's designed well, you shouldn't really need to worry much about the sound itself, um, but there are some things that you can do. If you actually click on the instrument, which is green here, um, you might have seen me do this a moment ago, you can click and drag the pitch of it up and down, and it'll sound higher or lower. Also, you can right click it and you can say, add modulation. I've already done that. Let me just remove these so it's the same as what you can see and double click this. So you can right click on the pitch and you can say add modulation random and you can crank this up to I don't know six semitones so that when you play the sound fmod is not just going to randomize which sample it's choosing. Let me just delete one of these for now. So it's just one sample. It is also going to randomize the pitch of the sample so that it never plays in the same way. So that's quite cool. And you can do the same with the volume, but I don't really do this often because it's, it's a bit weird to have a sound that kind of changes in volume randomly. But you can do it if you want to. Let's remove these. You can also do something really fun, which is um, you can add a AD, AHDSR modulation, which means the pitch is going to change over time. Let's just give it a shape where the pitch increases by a load after a second. And this is a very fast sound, so we don't hear it much. maybe make it start off a bit lower and this sort of stuff is really useful when it comes to just a bit of basic sound manipulation in fmod so something sounds like it's ascending or it's descending like power on power off mm -hmm. you know these basic things are kind of vocabulary i suppose in game so even a sound like a gunshot we can make it sound like it's something turning off or turning on. Maybe not so much turning down here, it's a bit, it's a bit weird. But yeah, I um, just want to show that to you because we can do some sound manipulation um, in, in FMOD. But yeah, mostly we'd be dealing with very basic sounds, just, um, just some simple play instruments. And if we right click an empty bit of a track, we can actually see the different types of instruments that are at our disposal. So a single instrument is just a blue uh, instrument container, and that's the default one when you drag a sound in. But multi instruments have you seen, have you seen already are green, um, like the pistol multi because it will just select one of a playlist. So it's kind of like a playlist instrument. Um, we also have different types like um, scatterers and these are the ones you don't really need to worry about now. But there is something very important I want to draw to your attention, which is 
the tabs at the top here, this is a timeline tab, which is the default. And you can add extra tabs, um, such as you know health and speed. These aren't timelines, these are parameter sheets. So this value won't change unless the game tells FMOD to change. So if we play that, nothing happens because the play cursor is actually off at the end. So I need to go back to the timeline sheet and press stop. And then it plays again from the start. So the point is that these timeline sheets aren't necessarily, uh, these parameter sheets aren't necessarily going to play the audio in the way that you expect. Only the timeline sheet will work in a kind of linear timeline way. It should still play the sound though from the timeline sheet as long as the cursor is back at the start. If you accidentally leave it there, it won't do anything, so just make sure it's back at the start. And this isn't the cursor position here doesn't really affect Unity anyway. Um, it's just for your own troubleshooting. And um, the reason that we can add these parameter sheets and we can change them here is that we can preview a game state. Let's say your character is running fast but low on health. This would be the setup, like not that low, <laughs> that maybe maybe there. And this would give us that kind of situation. Now we haven't really told the sound to do anything differently in this situation, but we can do. And this is where this conditions area comes in because we can actually add the parameter conditions down here. We can say only play the sound when the health of the character is low. So now it will play because the 0.7 health is still within the 0 to 0.9. Let's just make that two, so it's easy to read. But if the health is above two, it's not meeting this condition and the sound doesn't get played. So that's the basics of parameters. And we'll look at those in more detail later on. In the examples that FMOD gives you, it may be slightly confusing that it's not using the basic timeline. And that's just because the person who put together the example project didn't use the timeline, that's fine. Because you actually don't need you don't need to use a timeline if you're loading everything into parameter sheets. And conversely, you don't really need to use the parameter sheets to have your audio if you're putting everything on the timeline with conditions. So it doesn't really matter. And this is something that I didn't really realize. I just kind of drifted into doing it in the, in the parameter sheet way. Um, there's no right or wrong here. All these sounds live on the parameter sheets, which means that this is the amount of traffic in the game, for example. And there's no timeline. There's no timeline here because this is a parameter sheet. So if I press play, let's say with this parameter setting of 0.13 traffic, it's going to loop the audio that is underneath the cursor at that point. See, so the audio is looping underneath because it's set to loop here. And if that wasn't set to loop, it will just expire when it reaches the end. But it's set to loop there, and when I scroll the parameter further along, it's going to start looping, or because this is a scatter instrument, it's going to start randomly triggering the sounds within the scatterer playlist. So if I click on this, this is a cool type of instrument that just spawns things. So it's quite a unique one. It's not very usual. It's not as usual as a, uh, a simple um, single instrument or a multi-instrument, which is essentially, oh, this is another scatterer. These are all scatterers. But they're just different types of kind of playlists, if you like. The scatterer just kind of triggers it at set intervals. So you can move things around on a parameter sheet so that the audio is only going to be heard when it reaches a certain point um, of the parameter. But just bear in mind that without the timeline sheet, nothing it might be controlling the lifespan of the event. So just stick to the timeline for now um, and don't use the parameter sheets um, until the case requires it and then we can look at how to control the life of the event in the timeline and have the parameters play either from the timeline or perhaps using parameter sheets. Um, but that's the reason that we have the option to use both 
is that the timeline is more about controlling the kind of lifespan of the event, back to the pistol. And if we have parameter sheets, um, we can have the same or other sounds respond to changes in the parameters while still having control over whether the event just releases at the end or whether it loops. Uh, we can use a loop region or a sustain point. There's different ways of controlling whether the event playback is going to um, be managed as the parameter sound comes or goes. And that's really um, it for now. I don't want to get too advanced into this stuff. I just wanted to give a good overview into FMOD and that's basically it. Um, and what we do when it comes to getting the sound into game is file build and wherever the project edit preferences build tab is pointed to, the um, FMOD files will be uh, sent to the game. So that's quite nice and it works quite well. And we'll come back and look at um, parameters in more detail in future. But that's basically FMOD in a nutshell. So I would encourage you to just go through different events. And this one uses a programmer instrument. Um, it's a bit silly because they have audio in it. Uh, well, not silly, but unnecessary, let's say. And they're all doing something different. And this one is on the timeline. Discovery, nominal Miko, Ohms 1, not required. So they're doing some crazy looping here. Discovery, nominal Miko, Ohms 1, not required. And they have a parameter called VO sidechain. You don't need to worry about this stuff. It's just kind of getting you used to the concept of FMOD being a tool for um, triggering rather than sound design. I'm just taking a quick look at these events to see how they're set up. Discovery, nominal Miko, Ohms 1, not required. What's interesting about this is that it's looping for a bit and then it's releasing itself. So I'm curious as to how it's releasing itself or what is telling it to release. And they've got um, just a funny transition on the go here. Um, personally, I maybe wouldn't do it that way, but there's different ways of doing things to get the same behavior. And everything that you do in FMOD should really all be about what is it that you're looking to do? And most of the time it's just play a simple sound. And sometimes it's playing a sound when something happens in the game and holding it for a bit until that thing that's happening isn't happening anymore. And then maybe releasing the sound or keeping it ready so that it can replay that thing that might happen again. And that's FMOD in a nutshell. Thanks.